Hi everyone, welcome back and in this video we're going to learn about exception handling basics. So exceptions are handled using try-catch blocks of code. You basically surround the code where something could go wrong with the try block of code and this is where the exception is set to be thrown and then the code that you want to happen if something does go wrong goes in the catch block and this is also called a handler. So Let's take a look at how to write try-catch blocks. So in the last video, we created an exception by creating two variables, int x is 5 and int y is 0. And by printing out x divided by y, and also the end at the end, you'll see that our program will crash with a runtime exception on line number 8, and also it never printed out the end. It never made it that far because our program crashed. So this is what you should do to fix it. And here's the easiest way to do it. So we know this is the code where something went wrong. So let's isolate that. Give me some room. And surround this with a try block. Let's try this right there. We're going to try that. And we're going to add a catch block. And what we're going to catch is this exception right here, arithmetic exception. The easiest way to figure out which exception you should catch for is to let your program crash and then look in the console and look at the exception that was thrown and just catch for that one. So let's copy and paste that right there and let's give it a name. Let's just call it AE for arithmetic exception. And some curly braces right there. And what do we want it to do if this happens? So rather than just crashing, which is something you don't want the user to see when they're running your program, you should probably say something like, in a print line statement, you cannot divide by zero. All right, that's it. And now let's run the program again. And rather than crashing, it just says you cannot divide by zero. So this try block of code, it tried to do this, it threw an arithmetic exception, and because that happened, it went down here instead, and it printed out you can't divide by zero, and then, and because the exception was handled, it continued with the rest of the program and printed out the end at the end of the program. Let's try this one more time using the other example we did in the previous video. We had an integer array using an initialization list. 2, 5, 9, 12, I don't remember what numbers I typed, but it doesn't matter. And let's loop through them. Array at index i, and this is not going to give you any kind of problems. It's going to just print out all those numbers right there. But if we made a slight mistake, where we change the operator from less than to less than or equal to, it'll loop one extra time, causing an array index out of bounds exception. So I know the problem happened here somewhere. So let's surround this code with the try. Let's indent everything over. Close the curly brace for the try. And add the catch block. And what we want to catch for is array index out of bounds exception. So copy that from down there paste it up here, call it whatever you want, Eve for exception is fine. And, and what do we want to happen in here instead? System.out.println reach the end of the array. Something nice and simple. Now when I run the program, it prints out all the elements, and when it got to the end, it just says reach the end of the array rather than crashing. So that is another way to handle exceptions. And if you don't know what to put for the exception type that you're catching, you can actually just catch exception. That should pretty much catch everything. And the parent class of exception, or the super class, is actually throwable. That'll guarantee that it catches pretty much every exception that's known to Java.